last weeks, we've been all over the map. We've been in Bethlehem, in Judea, in Egypt, in Nazareth, and now in Capernaum, different territories. Before Capernaum, there was a brief one-day visit to the Jordan River. <coughs> That we've encapsulized in the last two festivals, the festival of the Nativity of the Lord, the festival of the Holy Theophany, the life of our Lord for 30 years, and these two feasts. His birth, his exile into Egypt for a number of years, his coming back, living in Nazareth for some 30 years, quietly, in what we call the hidden life of Christ. And then coming one day to the Jordan River and being baptized by John in the Jordan. And when Jesus hears that John was arrested and put into prison, Jesus leaves Judea, he goes back to Galilee, but he leaves his home in Nazareth and he goes to the city of Capernaum, which is by the Sea of Tiberias. And there Jesus begins to get disciples, and Jesus begins to preach and teach and to work the signs of the kingdom of heaven. And the beginning message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his teaching is this. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is the same message that John the Baptist was preaching. But with St. John the Baptist, the forerunner, he was saying that the time is coming for repentance, and now with Christ the time of repentance is at here. Sometimes people hear the gospel of Christ and they say, what does Jesus Christ want from us? And people kind of create a gospel message after their own inclinations. Some want a God that's all loving, a God that's all merciful, a God that's all accepting, a God that is open to all things to the measure of what an individual wants. The teaching of Jesus Christ is very clear though, that the beginning of entrance into eternal life is a radical change. It's repentance, it's matanlia, it's changing oneself. In our church, we say that there's the seasons of repentance of four lengths. Well, it's true. But in the four lengths, all we do is underline something that is always the text, that the text of ordinary life in this world is a life of repentance, of continually coming back unto the Lord. This is what the great feast of the Lord teach us. Again, that we are made in the image of God, that God has redeemed us, that he's cleaned up the image that was distorted by sinfulness, that he's destroyed the power of sin, death, and the devil, that as the Holy Apostle Paul said in the epistle yesterday, that by the water of regeneration and the renewing of the spirit, that we are called to live in godliness and righteousness and to have the hope of the appearing of Christ to come again. He also says to live in sobriety, spiritual sobriety, which means to be aware, to have one's senses about oneself of what's going on, not to be intoxicated with the things of the fallen world. The epistle today, Paul tells us that our life in Christ is to come to the unity of the faith, that means the fullness of the faith, so that we understand what this faith is that we have in Jesus Christ, and to have the gift of faith that only Jesus Christ could give us. To have the unity of the faith and to have the knowledge of the Son of God. Not to know about Jesus Christ, but to know Him. To know Him is to experience Him. To experience Him is to have personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But we have to feel Jesus Christ present in our life. But our life has to be present unto Jesus Christ. That it's an empirical aspect of what we do and who we are. That it's something that's existentially experienced. Jesus Christ can't just be an idea. He can't be a God that is far above us. But no, he's Emmanuel, God is with us. And if God is with us, there is nothing and no one that can harm us or do anything to us. Also, Paul, he goes on, says that we could attain to the perfect man. But what is a perfect man? The perfect man is the God-man, Jesus Christ. 
He is the one who is perfected in his humanity. But the perfection of Christ's humanity is the perfection of the humanity that he has bestowed upon us. Remember, we are made in the image and likeness of God. But more particularly, we're made in the image and likeness of the image of God. And the image of God is the person of Christ. He is a visible image, each one, the visible icon of the invisible Father. And since he has adopted our humanity and assumed it himself, the perfection of who we are as human beings, each one of us personally, is realized in as much as we are Christified. We become Christophori, Christ bearers. That's how the image of Christ is renewed within us. This is the knowledge, the experience that we have of Jesus Christ. The perfect man. Should we want to be perfect? Of course we want to be perfect. We want happiness. We want love. We want everything as virtuous. And the Lord wants us to want these things. But all the good things that we can have and ought to have and will have can only come in Jesus Christ. If we look elsewhere to other people, places, and things, then we're going to wells that have no water. But we're going to places that are barren. And the Gospel today says that Jesus Christ comes as the light. It says people that have sat in the shadow of darkness, in the region of death, that a great light has come to them, that a great light has dawned upon them. The dawning of this great light, the Son of Righteousness, the God man Jesus Christ. So that the Gentiles, the pagans, and that's who we were. We weren't the Hebrews, we were the pagans. That from Capernaum, the light of Christ has shone forth. In Galilee, in Judea, in Samaria, and in Rome, and in Alexandria, and in Moscow, and to Nice, and Bucharest, and New York City, and uh, Butte, Montana, and Tokyo, Japan, and in all the world. That the light of Christ is extended. So there's no need for humanity to be in darkness. No need for humanity to be in the shadow. But the great light of Jesus Christ has appeared. We sing that on this festival of the Theophany. Today thou has appeared to the universe, and thy light, O Lord, has shone upon us. With understanding, praise thee. And so this festival of the Theophany of our Lord is again a feast for us to be spiritually renewed, to understand what our life consists of, and to be wholehearted, committed to that life. Not just sometimes, not just on a Sunday morning, but throughout 24-7, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we have to see ourselves as being living temples of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy of Holies, the God-man Jesus Christ, wants and desires to be present in our soul, in our heart. That's what the kingdom of God is. Our Lord says that. He says, the kingdom of God is within you. He says, if you love me and the Father, then the Father and myself will come and we will dwell within you. And so the kingdom of God is not something just far away, but it's the kingdom of God, something that we ought to and can experience and should desire to experience. But the road to that kingdom, the road to the kingdom is always continual repentance. That means to shed aside to put aside those things that are ungodly, those things that are of the fallen world, all those things that are of the Apostle Paul says of the old man, those things that should have no part with us, because we ourselves have been renewed in the waters of regeneration, newness of life through baptism, that we've been baptized in Christ and we've put on Christ. We were chrismated, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that we were consecrated, as this church was consecrated with the holy chrism, that our bodies, our souls, our minds, our will, our affections, our aspirations, everything was Christified by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And so we live godly lives. And this Feast of Theophania, the revelation of the Trinity of Persons, and the sanctification of ourselves, and the sanctification of ourselves, and the sanctification of the blessed waters, but again, we're given that opportunity and that challenge and the understanding that we need to lead, live and lead godly lives, to be holy as God is holy. 
This is the first Sunday of the year 2018. And we gather here in Synaxis and the Holy Temple. We say that Christ is in our midst and he is and forever shall be. But when we leave this temple and we go to our homes, and we go to our families, and we're by ourselves, then we need to aspire to prayer. To call upon God, not just morning and night, but all the time. And to speak to God. To go to the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, come to me, come to me. For I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And in me you will find the abundance of life. That I am the vine and you are the branches. Branches can only have life if they're rooted to the vine. And the vine is Jesus Christ. So let us, in gratitude, celebrate this festival of the Holy Theophania. We have it for this whole week. Next Sunday will be the leave taking of the Theophany. And again, we'll sing those hymns. Well, the Lord was baptized in the Jordan. Today, that has appeared to the universe. But these hymns should be part of our daily prayer this week. That we should rejoice that we were given the holy baptism, the holy chrismation, that we have been renewed. <coughs> As the Apostle Paul says again, but all this is so that we could come to what? Unity of the faith. The knowledge of the Son of God, the perfect man, and grow in the stature of the measure of the fullness of Christ. To grow in the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We never attain the fullness of Christ in us. That it's unending. Because Christ is all perfect. And we're called to be perfect in his perfection. To him be glory and honor forever. Amen.